Good evening, YouTube friends and family. This is Laura coming to you with a short video. And today's video is a continuation of dealing with the Judas in our camp and in our lives. This is part number two. And so let's jump right into it. As we know, G Judas was a betrayer and a thief. And we know that on the night that he betrayed Jesus, he came with soldiers and a few of the Pharisees and Sadducees, and they came with weapons, torches, and lanterns. I don't understand why they came with all of that. Jesus was not a violent threat to anyone, but that is what they came with. So let's move forward. Judas had already told them that the one that I kiss on the cheek, that is he, that is Jesus. So stay back. Let me approach him. You know, I'm his friend. He knows me. Let me go ahead and, and walk up here. So he did. And he kissed Jesus on the cheek. Jesus looked at him and said, Judas, you betray me with a kiss. And so betrayal, my friend, is, is such an ugly thing. It is, it's very hurtful. It's very painful. No one likes to be on the receiving end of betrayal. But it happens. And so how do we handle it? How do we handle how do we handle betrayal the right way? How do we handle it the way Jesus did? Okay? I know for most of us, if someone betrays us, a close friend, family member, we want to call them out. We want to go public with it. We want to kick them out of our lives. We want to get revenge. We want them to pay deeply for what they've done to us. But this is not the way we should handle it. We have to learn how to handle our Judases without them ever knowing that we know what they've done or what they're up to. That's the lesson. That's, that's what we have to learn how to apply. We have to learn to handle it without ever letting them know that we know. So that means sometimes we have to open our eyes and shut our mouth. Hmm. So let's get jump right into it. How did Jesus handle his Judas? We need to talk about what he did as well as what he didn't do. So let's start off, first of all, with what he did. And let's look at it according to scripture. And there are two main points. He continued to eat with Judas, which in Psalms 23, 5, it states that he prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. So Jesus never stopped eating with Judas. He had the last supper with him all the way up until the end. He continued to eat with him. Number two, he blessed him and he did not curse him. And that falls in line with the scripture that can be found in both Romans 12 and 14 and Matthew 5 and 44, which tells us that we are to bless our enemies and not to curse them. So how did Jesus continue to bless Judas the entire time, even though he knew he was about to betray him? Well, he continued to teach him the same lessons that Jesus taught the disciples. He also taught Judas. He didn't have Judas to go to another part of the boat. Whatever he said to the 11, he said it to Judas. He continued to give unto Judas. He continued to give unto him everything that he had. He continued to give unto him equally which means that he gave him the power, the knowledge. Judas had the same power as the other 11 disciples to heal the sick, raise the dead, open blind eyes, and feed the hungry. Jesus never withheld anything from him. The power is, like I said, in handling your Judas without them ever knowing it. Now, believe me, Jesus was no fool. He was not he was not fearful of Judas at all. He did not fear the evil that Judas was about to do to him. And that can be found also in Psalms 23, where it says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Jesus knew that what Judas was about to do would result in him losing his life. Yet and still, he never let on to it. I guarantee you that Judas was a marked man. I guarantee you that when Jesus interacted with him, he was marked. I guarantee you he watched him very closely. He watched what he said. He watched his mannerisms. He watched his interactions. Judas was a marked man. Jesus made a mental note and he kept an eye on this guy. 
And another thing that shows that Jesus was not fearful of Judas in which the Bible tells us that we're not to be fearful. And it reminds us of that over 365 times in the Bible. It tells us to fear not. So listen to this. On the day of the Last Supper, and after Jesus had mentioned that someone in this room is going to betray me, and when Judas, when the hour came, and it was time to, for Judas to go and do what he needed to do, Jesus looked him straight in the eye and he said, you know what? What you are about to do, go and do what you need to do. And I'm paraphrasing. Go do what you need to do to me and do it quickly. Go and do what you need to do and get it over with. Get it done quickly. Wouldn't it be nice to be able to say that to you, the Judas in your camp? What you're about to do to me, go ahead and do it. Get her done. Do it quickly. You know why Jesus could fear not? Because he knew that Judas could only do to him what God allowed him to do. And I can back that up with scripture because in Isaiah 59, 19, it says, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Lord will raise up a standard against him. So Judas was only allowed to do unto Jesus what God was allowing him to do. And the Judas in your life can only go as far as God allows him to go. When he does come at you, God will raise up a standard against him and he will flee in several different ways. He may come at you one way, but he will flee in several different ways. So there's no need to fear your Judas. There's no need to fear them at all. Okay, so let's take a look at, let's go into part two of this lesson. Part two, what did Jesus not do and there are two things that he did not do first of all he didn't call him out Jesus did make a public spectacle of Judas he didn't go around and tell all of the other disciples that's him over there he's about to go betray me which is going to result in me losing my life he didn't bring any type of accusations against Judas at all even though he knew what Judas was about to do was wrong and you know what there's no need to bring accusations against your Judas because you know what they know what they did to you is wrong they know they know exactly what they did and they know that it's wrong and Judas knew exactly what he did to Jesus and he knew that it was wrong and anyway the Bible states that Satan is the accuser of the brethren so Jesus didn't he didn't lay a charge against Judas at all okay number two which is very important point number two under what Jesus did not do he took no revenge against Judas. And that can be found scripturally in Romans 12 and 21, where it says we overcome evil with good. The Bible also lets us know that God says that vengeance is his. And we know that in the Bible, there's a such thing as the law of reaping and sowing. A man shall reap what he sows. So there's no need to bring revenge against the Judas because he's going to reap what he sows. That's for sure. That's a law. That's a law. And so we know in the end that Judas, he ended up taking his life. He ended up hanging himself. And we can look at this spiritually and physically. Yes, physically Judas took his life, but spiritually he did too. Because you know what, the same ditch that someone digs for you, the same pit, that person, that's in Proverbs, that person will fall in that ditch themselves. And so you heard the saying that you can give a person enough rope to hang themselves. That's where that dealing with Judas without them ever knowing that you're on to them, handling them with such finesse that they never know that you know what they've done. You give them enough rope to hang them themselves. And you know what? Because they think they're getting away with stuff and they got it covered and they're making a fool out of you and, 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 and you're caught unaware. You're just giving them enough rope to hang themselves. And I don't want, I don't want to say that your Judas should go and, 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 and hang him, him or herself physically. No. And I don't wish that on anyone. But they will hang themselves spiritually. They will set a trap for themselves. By trying to set a trap for you. And the final lesson in this. As far as when it comes to dealing with the Judas in our lives. My friend, we have to forgive 
our Judas. I know. That's that's a that's a hot spot right there. That's a soft, tender spot. Because betrayal is so ugly and it hurts so bad. But we have to come to a point where we forgive the Judases in our lives. If they come back to you and say, you know what, I did you wrong. I'm sorry, will you forgive me? You have to. You're obligated to do that. The Bible says that if we want our sins forgiven, that we need to forgive also. And you're not doing the forgiveness for them. You're doing it for yourself. And even my friend, you know what? Caveat here. If you've never received the I'm sorry, I did you wrong, will you forgive me? You have to come to a point in your life where you forgive them anyway. So that you can move on, so that you can grow in your life. So that you can live prosperous, so that you can be set free. So that you can heal and grow and move forward in your life and not stay stagnant and stuck and be at liberty. You must forgive your Judas. And so I think this is a good place to end right here where we must forgive our Judas. And just remember, um, just remember what we talked about today in this video. Okay. And apply it to your life and apply the scriptures. Look up those scriptures. Okay. Well, if you enjoyed the content of my YouTube channel, please like, subscribe, leave a comment and share, share this video with someone. If you have not subscribed, please hit that subscribe button. And as always, until we meet again, bye-bye, my friends.